Welcome back to our program, The Persian Magi. I wish to start with a piece of poetry again from Hafiz, the um, poet and prophet of the 14th century of Iran. He says, گفت آن یار کزو گشت سر دار بلند جرمشان بود که اسرار هو بیدام کرد Translation, rough translation says That friend of us whose head was raised about the gallows or who was hanged His crime was only that he was uh, expressing the secrets Mm. He was telling the secrets. So I am telling the secrets and uh, it doesn't work like that uh, since we are scared of the gallows we shouldn't speak. It is uh, com completely the opposite. We speak because maybe tomorrow uh, uh, I can't speak anymore. So mm. since I can't speak right now I should Okay, we left a question unanswered in our previous programs. We talked about Allah. We talked that He is, the meaning of His name is the father of the uh, Ishtar. And uh, we uh, again we spoke about the form of and the structure of the mosques. And all of that is uh, brings us to a very important question how is that muhammad the prophet of islam brings a monotheistic religion and the islam is a monotheistic religion with this killer god on the top so uh, how did it happen how is it possible that muhammad brought such a monotheistic religion but the name of islam means Isis or Ishtar for all, and the name of Allah and Iblis are one and the same, and they indicate to the father of the uh, Jahu, father of Ishtar. We should uh, check a little deeper into, go into a little bit deeper into the name of the um, Muhammad himself and his family. Um, in fact, the, when you look at the p map of the time when Muhammad uh, started the religion of Islam, he was born, oh sorry, he, he, was, he migrated from Mecca to Medina at 621 after Christ, 621 AD. At that time, the Sassanid Empire were the empires of Iran. And uh, when you look at the map, at that time, the Sassanid Empire of Iran had captured all the surrounding area of the present-day Arabia. And it, has a lot, it had a lot of influence on of Arabia, uh, to be more proper. So we can expect that many words of Persian are there still uh, because the, their language was Arabic in Arabia, but we can find uh, Persian words, especially if they are the followers of the Persian gods. Uh, the moon in Farsi is Mah or Mah. Mah. So look at the name of uh, Muhammad, Muhammad. If you separate the part Mah, you will have Hamad. Hamad, I should say, that means uh, the worshipper. Muhammad, uh, if you mix this Farsi and Arabic word together, Muhammad means the one who worships moon. Muhammad, as a name, means moon worshipper. The name of the daughter for us is very important because we are all, in all cases, we are looking for a father and daughter. The daughter, Muhammad's most important daughter, which uh, she, he is always praising her, is called Fatima. Fatima. In Farsi we say Fatima. So, the... Uh, if you notice, there is again another Mah 
in the end of this name, Fatima. Fatima. Mah is moon. So what is Fati? In Arabic, I didn't see anything for Fati. What does it mean? But in old Persian, in Pahlavi Persian, there is uh, Pati or Patika uh, means uh, the protector or supporter. And uh, since uh, if if Arabs want to use Pati, they don't have the word Pe in Arabic, so they simply have changed Pati to Fati. It means protector. Fatima or Patima simply means the protector of the moon. The father is the moon, and the daughter is the protector of the moon. Welcome to the old version of Islam. We will discuss that the families, the family of the father and daughter, the devil family, the father is devil and the daughter is genie, they are either the families comprised of two and uh, the uh, they family becomes five people. The family of the demons is usually comprised of five. That's why this sign, the symbol of pagan, of five fingers, it means the five deities of the pagans. So this hand sign is very important for the pagan and, as I said, similarly for the magi. Okay, the family of Muhammad, if we think that they have been originally pagans, this is what I'm saying, uh, they, they should be five. Uh, this family of God, in Arabic, it is called Alullah. Al Alullah means the family of God. In Farsi, we say Alullah. They are five, yes. Um, in fact, uh, um, Fatima has a husband. Her name is Ali. Ali is Al or El. El is again the um, uh, Canaanite god, whom Elohim, that name is very important. And then Fatima has two sons, Hassan and Hussein. Uh, there is a very important hadith or saying which is coming directly from the time of, this, of Islam about this Allah or Al Abba. It says, um, Muhammad was sitting and uh, Fatima was sitting next to him and Ali was also sitting there. And Muhammad, uh, this Abba um, is part of the cloth. And Muhammad was, um, uh, uh, was uh, co covering the heads of these three people over their heads. So Hassan and Hussein also came in, the grandsons of Muhammad, and he asked them to come and to come and sit under the Abba, under the cover. So the five people were uh, sat there and Muhammad said, uh, God is giving the, the greatest blessings of earth and universe to these five people and we five people are sacred. So, and there was a very close friend of Muhammad standing there. He said, Ya Muhammad, can I come inside? But Muhammad said, no, you cannot, because these five people, these five people are the sacred people. So again, we see that this family represents a pagan family who are the moon worshippers. We hear that um, Islam is divided into two branches. The major branch is now Sunnah, and the smaller branch which is practiced in Iran is Shia. Uh, usually Sunnahs will say Shia is Majusi, and uh, in fact they are pagans. This is what they mean. Uh, part of it has been true through the history, this is what I believe, that uh, Shia, when it was first initiated, it was a 
cult of moon and worship and uh, more importantly his daughter Ishtar worship or Jehu worship but I believe that at least a thousand years ago she uh, also became dead no the um, Shia have forgotten their origins and have forgotten their Magi origins and you cannot uh, think that um, you cannot be happy that okay oh yes she are still followers of uh, Jahi and Dahrimans and we can count on them as pagans no they are not <laughs> sorry they are not pagans anymore the Shia is just like, just as Muslim as uh, um, as Sunnah and they are the followers of God, the false God, the killer God. And that's why the Shia of, of Iran, uh, if the Democrats of the world ta had thought in 1979 that Shia may bring a version of paganism and maybe that's what that has been the reason to bring the Magi, the, the Shia religion to Iran, they have been absolutely wrong because Shia is a dead of, ten th of a thousand years and Shia has nothing to do with mm, Persian Magi anymore, unfortunately. But yes, the truth is correct. They made the Shia at that time when Islam attacked Iran, Iranians became, became Shia because they thought that this family of five and the name of Muhammad and name of Allah, Islam and everything indicated that this is a pagan religion. So, but what happened to this pagan religion of Islam, they have originally been uh, pagans. So how and uh, it was turned to a religion that we, we know right now, we will discuss later. Thank you for watching.